I'm going to be rebuilding the Dallas Cowboys because they have done basically nothing in free agency. I mean, they did get Eric Kendricks, but they also lost Leighton Vander Ash, Michael Gallup, Tony Pollard, and now they have Deuce Vaughn here. And he's like five foot eight, isn't he? Five foot six, 176. Oh, size doesn't matter. Sometimes it does, guys, if you know what I mean. But if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you like and or subscribe. Let's see if we can get 100 likes on this video. I would appreciate that. The channel is growing quickly, so make sure you're one of the OGs before we hit 20,000 subscribers. But for the overlook of the team, the offensive line losing Tyron Smith, it makes it look not so great. I'm going to start Schoonmaker here over Ferguson. I know Jake Ferguson is great in real life, but in Madden, Schoonmaker is younger and he does have started. For the receiving core, CD Lamb is a 99 overall with the boost after simulating to the offseason. Brendan Cooks is a solid number two. They also just lost Michael Gallup, so we may need to find a replacement. And as always, on this channel, I don't care about censoring my opinion. I'm going to be honest. I personally do not think Dak Prescott will ever win a Super Bowl as a starting quarterback for the Cowboys. Sure, maybe as a backup or maybe starting somewhere in a different scheme. Me personally, he's never made it past the divisional round. And I don't want to sound like I'm a D1 Dak hater, even though I kind of am. Yes, he had an amazing regular season. He doesn't perform in the playoffs. And I know some people will be like, oh, well, neither does Lamar. Lamar plays in the AFC. AFC conference is way harder than the NFC. NFC is becoming a little bit more difficult, especially after this free agency. I will admit that. But in my personal opinion, I just don't think Dak is going to get it done for the Cowboys. I don't think he's ever going to win a Super Bowl with the Cowboys. If you want to hate me, you can. It's just a personal opinion. I'm not trying to personally attack Dak. It's just an opinion on saying that I don't think he's good enough to get it done. Now, can he keep having amazing regular seasons? Yes. Can he keep putting up great stats? Yes, he can. But Dak Prescott was out here asking to quote unquote, reset the QB market. Whenever someone says they want to reset a positional market, that just means they want to be the highest paid player or close to one of the highest paid players. He is great. He was he had a great regular season this year just to be wiped, humiliated by a number seven seed. Oh, well, the score wasn't that bad. This, the game was over when it was like, what, 41 to 18. I'm not trying to totally shit on Cowboys fans here, but I personally don't think Dak will get it done. He constantly wants more and more money. Does he deserve the money? No, he doesn't deserve to be paid more than the other top five QBs in the league. He's not a top five QB in regular season. Sure. I don't give a shit about regular season. What is he doing in the postseason? Nothing. But apart from hating on Dak, again, it's just a personal opinion. I'm not trying to gripe someone and grab them by the balls and be like, oh, you're an idiot. You're just so wrong. You're so stupid. I'm not trying to make anyone feel stupid or sound stupid. It's just my personal opinion. For the defense, though, this defensive line, Dexter Lawrence, Micah Parsons, Oda Odigazua, and Mozzie Smith. Mozzie Smith hasn't had the craziest rookie year. I don't really think he's done much of anything. Didn't get much playing time, but he has time to develop for sure. Trayvon Diggs, Deron Bland, great DB duo in the NFL. Donovan Wilson, Malik Hooker, Domain Clark, and Eric Kendricks, who's just a temporary pl- replacement here. I think it was a one or two year deal just to replace Leighton Vander Ash. But in the draft, the Dallas Cowboys did lose their starting left tackle. So we got to draft a new one. Patrick Paul out of Houston here, six foot seven. 332 pounds, great athleticism across the board. So many A's across the board here. He is a pass protector archetype and he will be our future left tackle with hidden dev here. 89 strength, 78 jumping, 78 acceleration and great skills across the board. In the second round, I'm picking up our new halfback. I honestly don't think Deuce Vaughn will be enough to be a starter. He is a good running back. He could be a good running back for sure in a rotational set. I don't think he will be a D1, day one starter. Not a D1, you know what I mean. Day one starter for the Cowboys. Trey Benson out of Florida State, six foot, 220, hit and dev, 93 speed for being a power back is amazing with 93 acceleration. So many A's across the board. He looks great. And in the third round, picking up center Cedric Van Pran out of Georgia, 6'4, 300 pounds, hit and dev, 88 strength. Not very athletic, but it's fine. He's my center. I don't really need him on pulling plays. Sometimes there is, but B is across the board. Pretty good for a third round pick. Now this is the team after the draft. When all offense, the first three rounds here, we got Patrick Paul, Van Pran, Trey Benson. Offense, we're shaping back together this offensive line, getting a new running back here. Defensively, I think the Cowboys defense is really, really good in real life. Still needs to work on the interior defensive line in real life. Hopefully, Mozzie Smith again does develop. But for right now, the Cowboys still a playoff team. Let's see what Dak does in Madden because he's a god in Madden. But again, he doesn't quite get it done in real life. And nobody can disagree with me on that because he hasn't made it past the divisional round in his career. So don't ever come at me about it. I'm kidding. I'm not trying to be aggressive here. Anyways, apart from that, let's move into the midseason. Four and two, third in the division at the midseason mark. 
here to face the 6-1 San Francisco 49ers. For the scouting national focus, even though it's a weakness of the class, I think I'm just going to do middle linebacker here. For the players ready to negotiate, C.D. Lamb, 25 years old. He's about to get paid $30 million a year. He's about to get this bag here, and he accepts. Dak wants to quote-unquote reset the QB market. If it's up to me in real life, I'd be like, hell no, you haven't made it past the divisional round. We're trading your dumbass while you still have value. He wants to get, this is going to give him about $50 million a year, something around that. He would probably get that in real life after quote unquote wanting to reset the QB market. And he resigns on that. And before you guys say, oh, well, why didn't you just trade Dak if you would do it in real life? Because this is Madden and Dak is a god in Madden. He is so good in Madden for some reason. In real life, in the regular season, I'll admit Dak is really good in real life. Not trying to hate. It's just an opinion, guys. But Demarcus Lawrence, he will regress in this next upcoming season, so I want his contract to go down. So I think I'm just gonna wait on this. Odigazua, I think I'll do I'll do a three year deal on this, even though it's 10 million a year. Zach Martin, absolutely, he's definitely gonna retire in this simulation, but still gonna give him a three year contract. Brandon Cooks is 30 years old. Don't want him despite his interest. Marquise Bell. This would not be a bad contract if I spread this out. About $6 million a year. I would like this for sure. Free safety. Everyone else here. Trey Lance. Everyone's going to say didn't really get a chance. He got a chance in practice to prove himself. Obviously, he didn't do enough to be the starter. And I liked him coming out of the draft. Everyone else here, I'm not going to worry about. Let's move in to the playoffs. And the Cowboys finished 12 and 5 behind the Giants make a wish offense. How did that offense possibly go 12 and 5 and take the division? Coming off a win to the Browns here. Dak balled out league MVP in simulation here, I'm assuming. Nope, he gets third, but still, he's balling out here. Third best offense in the NFL. Defensively, we are, if it shows me, third in the league. Dak, 4,800 yards, 41 touchdowns, nine receptions, 116 pass rating is amazing. Trey Benson, rookie season, 10 touchdowns is nice, but you know he only has 3.6 per carry, which isn't the best, but in Madden, it matters about the running backs overall, so we got to let him develop for a little bit. CeeDee Lamb, 136 receptions, 1,800 yards, 17 touchdowns is an amazing season. Brandon Cooks, 11 touchdowns, 1,000 yards. Jalen Tolbert with 800 yards, six touchdowns. Defensively, Marquis Bell with 140 five tackles. He did more than Eric Kendricks. Tackles for a loss, 21 for Micah Parsons. Sacks, 20 for Micah Parsons, 14 for Dexter Lawrence. He's definitely going to get re-signed now. Interceptions, three for Deron Bland and Malik Hooker. Safeties on the team is one for Micah Parsons, one for Odigazua, and defensive touchdowns is zero. But we got to play the Niners in round one. They are 11 and six here. We got to go all the way to Santa Clara to play them. And we beat them 29-28, probably on a two-point conversion. The Vikings, with Sam Darnold went 13 and 4. They had to have picked someone else. There's no way Sam Darnold just bought out and went 13 and 4. There's absolutely no way. I have to look at this here and okay, sure, dude. Sure. Kenny Pickett. All right. Can we beat Kenny Pickett and the Minnesota Vikings to move on to Dak Prescott's first conference championship? We do here to face the 10 and 7 Philadelphia Eagles. Let's move into this. Here we are against the Philadelphia Eagles. They punted. We put three on the board. I thought we punted there, but guess it was just a kicker's kick. 7 to 10 now against the Eagles, 10 to 10 in the second quarter and nobody capitalizes before half this time, but we open up with 7. They respond with 7. Fourth quarter 17-17, 20 to 17 here, put another 7 on the board here. Two score game and that will be the game. 27-24 and the Cowboys without Tony Pollard, without Michael Gallup, without Leighton Vander Ash and a little bit new of an offensive line and Trey Benson are going to the Super Bowl in year number one with Dak. In year number one with the Cowboys, the Bengals are looking to get their first ever Super Bowl win. But for right now, let's see the team upgrades offensively. Trey Benson, Van Pran, and Paul all have star dev. I'm cool with that. Any other upgrades? Ferguson gets star dev, even though I started Schoonmaker. I guess they adjusted it. Fine with me. Defensively, Garvin here has star dev. Jonathan Garvin, I'm going to be honest, never heard of him. Please don't come from my head in the comments if I don't know every detail about every player. Malik Hooker gets star dev. And Abrams Drain here, or Drainy, has star dev as well. Pretty good upgrades for the team. D Dexter Lawrence, not Dexter Lawrence, Demarcus Lawrence seems to upgrade even further. Nope. Nope, let me let me let me please just get to the end of the game. There we go. <laughs> for some reason it wasn't starting, but seven nothing, fourteen nothing for the Bengals, fourteen seven here. Joe Burrow is not gonna allow another Super Bowl loss. Twenty one fourteen. Can we make it happen? And Joe Burrow is second Super Bowl loss in his career. Probably not. Offense is not stepping up. Defense is doing an even worse job here. Offense did kind of step up there. Forty one twenty eight. Defense atrocious job. 
allowing 41 points from the Bengals. I mean, it's the Bengals, but we're going to lose here in year number one against Joe Burrow, and he's going to claim his first ever Super Bowl ring. Four touchdown performance from Dak is amazing to two interceptions, though. Still, four touchdowns is great. The defense allowing 41 points is kind of outrageous. Joe Burrow wins the Super Bowl MVP and the league MVP. C.D. Lamb wins Offensive Player of the Year, and Micah Parsons wins Defensive Player of the Year. For the NFC East retirements, Darius Slay retires on the Eagles. For the players ready to negotiate, Tyler Smith. I guess I'll accept that option since he's already such a high overall. Demarcus Lawrence. He actually goes down one overall after producing 14 sacks. Doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I still want to keep him on this team. To work down his contract as he regresses, give him a little bit more money here. He resigns for another year. And everyone else here, I just don't have an interest in. After free agency, the Cowboys needed a linebacker. I got one. JOK and a little bit of a weird signing, but instead of going to the Houston Texans, he's going to the Dallas Cowboys here. A different Texas team, DeAndre Hopkins, on a short-term two-year deal with the Cowboys as he is ring chasing and we need a receiver number three. In the draft, I'm picking best player available, wide receiver Tommy McKee, because DeAndre Hopkins, I meant to say, was going to be wide receiver number two because we lost Brandon Cooks. But Tommy McKee is 6'3", 224, normal dev at a TCU, but very athletic, and he had A catch in traffic, A short route, B release. He looked great, but normal dev really sucked. Year number two with the team, McKee is is a 75 overall, but he's a normal dev, so I'll just move him to the three right now. And I'll also just start him in the slot so that way he gets more reps. Defensively, we're looking pretty good. Eric Kendricks has regressed to a 74 overall. JOK is a left outside linebacker, and I'm going to officially move his position to that. Now, this is the defense going into year number two. It already looks crazy the way it is. Didn't really have to do much to adjust it. And offensively, the O-line seems to be developing nicely. D-hop on a two-year deal. McKee can hopefully develop. Trey Benson as well. But for now, let's move into the midseason. At the midseason mark, we are two and four. And at the bottom of the division after improving my team. Nice. Scouting national focus. Can I scout a new team? Sure, I guess I'll just do defensive tackle. For my team ranks, my defensive rushing game sucks after signing a new linebacker. Yes, one of my linebackers is regressing, but I even drafted a defensive tackle in the second round, and my uh, defensive line just sucks. Apparently, my defensive passing game is number one in the league, but apparently my offense is just mid now with 99 CD Lamb and an improved offensive line. Okay. For the players ready to negotiate, Micah Parsons, take all the money. You can have it all. I don't care. And now I only have 2.5 million left. I didn't think this one through. Jake Ferguson. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I, uh, I'm i screwed. I want Theron Bland. I don't need Jake Ferguson since I have Schoonmaker. Domain Clark, I would like back as well. I did not think about how much I would have to pay Yeah, Michael Parsons. I'm kind of screwed here. Demarcus Lawrence, Donovan Wilson. Yeah, I'm just going to deal with this in the offseason. This is a problem for future me. In the playoffs, we finished 9-8 and eight and missed the playoffs. Great. My defensive rushing game is 22nd, and my team is an 89 overall, and we still suck. Stats and awards, Dak did really good. Eighth best offense in the NFL, and defensively, we are fifth, and we went 9-8. and eight. Dak, 4,300 yards, 33 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, 112 pass rating. Good season, great season, actually. Trey Benson, 12 touchdowns, 3.7 per carry, 1,100 yards. Improvement here. Still need to get that average up, though. C.D. Lamb, over 100 receptions again, 1,300 yards, 7 touchdowns. Not nearly as good as last season. He was Offensive Player of the Year last year, but still a great season. Tommy McKee with 9 touchdowns, 1,000 yards. That's at least start to have, especially for a rookie. D-Hop, still putting up solid numbers here. Well, actually, almost great numbers with 900 yards, 8 touchdowns. Defensively, JOK, 105 tackles. Tackles for a loss, 22 for Micah Parsons. Sacks, 18 for Micah Parsons, 13 for Demarcus Lawrence, and 6 for Odigazua. Interceptions, 2 for Marquise Bell. And safeties on the team is 0 defensive touchdowns, is 1 for Trayvon Diggs. And the Niners get their revenge on the Chiefs, beating them 28-21, finally winning a Super Bowl after losing three Super Bowls in a row. Not like in a row in the same season, but every time they made their past three Super Bowls, they lost. Brock Purdy wins the Super Bowl MVP. Joe Burrow wins back-to-back league MVPs. There are no awards here for the Cowboys. For the retirements, D-Hop and Eric Kendricks both retires. That's actually good for our cap room. Bobby Wagner also retires on the Commanders. For the team upgrades, McKee does get star dev. Ferguson gets superstar dev. Anyone else offensively? No, we still look really good though. Defensively, JOK gets superstar dev. Surprised Marquise Bell doesn't even have star dev. I'm tempted to give him it, but I'm not going to. No other upgrades that I can see for the team. Now we have 32 million in cap room. I don't know how that makes sense. DeAndre Hopkins and Eric Hendricks contracts definitely didn't make up 32 million. I'm pretty sure we only had like 4 million left. So yeah, their contracts combined did not make up $28 million. Either way, Jake Ferguson, ugh, I don't know what to do. 
because he will start regression the next season. I'm not paying you $12 million. You're not even putting up 1,000 yards a season. We're in a wide receiver one focus. We're not in like the Kansas City Chiefs focus playbook. I'll just have Schoonmaker start. Mozzie Smith, sure, I'll accept the option. Just hold that off for another year. Domain Clark. Dexter Lawrence is still putting up numbers. Do I sign him first? $12 million? That's not bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag Deron Bland for right now. So I'm going to give him this contract. He's not going to want it. He wants to play for a new team. And then I'm going to finesse Domain Clark. And yeah, that's a cheaper contract. I thought he was going to want like $10 million a year. Hell yeah, I'll sign that. He resigns on that. And then Demarcus Lawrence, I'll take him back for another year, work down his contract as he regresses. $14 million left. Donovan Wilson, I'll do that on another one-year deal here. Increase his bonus a little bit more. I'll go into negative cap to maintain this team because it did make a Super Bowl regardless of what we just had going nine and eight. Brendan Aubrey has started, but I already have a new kicker to replace him. 8.2 million. I'm tagging Deron Bland. And if I can't have him next season, if he doesn't want to resign next season, I'll just tag and trade him. But for right now, we're losing Ferguson. We're going to have Schoonmaker replace him. And everyone else here is just an extra. I'm fine with that. Let's move into the draft. In the first round, picking up another wide receiver because D Hop retired. James Price out of Wisconsin, 6'4, 234, hidden dev, 89 speed, 87 acceleration. Not very fast, but ace back catch and a catch in traffic. In the third round, picking up middle linebacker to replace Eric Kendricks, Gary Johnston out of Wisconsin. Another Wisconsin guy, 6'4, 244, 86 speed, 86 acceleration, hidden dev. So many Bs across the board, he will be a great depth player. And in the fifth round, picking up DB Nick Solomon out of Michigan State. Yeah, I know it's kind of crazy. Not very fast, but still for a fifth round pick, not bad. Hidden dev, B catching, B man coverage. Not crazy skills, but. And also F hit power. I mean, it's fine. He's only 208, six foot, which isn't crazy, but it's also not super small. Now this is the team moving into year number three. I have no idea how we went nine and eight last year after being top 10 in offense and in defense, but price is a 75 overall. We're going to put a six, four receiver in the slot. See how that goes. Defensively, Johnston's actually a 77. I think I'm going to tempted to start him over Bell and see how quickly he progresses. Is he in here? No, he's not since we already have other guys there. So for now, I'm going to put Johnston actually at the number two for outside linebacker and inside linebacker. But the rest of the defense is looking pretty nice special teams wise. I did pick up some rookies in previous years. McNeil kind of sucks, but it's fine. Maybe my special teams is just so garbage. Maybe that is the case. So I'm just getting Matt Gay on a one-year deal and also punter Jake Bailey. Four and three at the midseason mark behind the Washington Commanders who are four and two coming off a loss of the Bears. For the scouting national focus, I think I'm going to do safety since Malik Coker and Donovan Wilson are both regressing. We have a tandem breakout here. We got to challenge Tommy McKee here, see what he does. I think this will give him a little bit XP if I do this. We'll see if he actually follows through with it in the next uh, week. For the players ready to negotiate, Deron Bland, Trayvon Diggs, Tyler Smith, Luke Schoonmaker, Malik Hooker, Demarcus Lawrence. We're screwed. There's no getting out of this. There is no getting out of this. I should have not just signed JOK. Yeah, we need to win this year or we're not winning at all. So since Trayvon Diggs actually has an interest with the team, I think I am going to sign Trayvon Diggs and then I'm going to tag and trade Deron Bland, Tyler Smith. Um, I might have to, I, I'm going to have to tag and trade one of these guys because I just signed Trayvon Diggs. And yeah, we're going to lose out on a lot here, but it, it's part of the part of the team rebuilding. I should not have signed JOK, but it is what it is. Let's move in to the playoffs. Coming off a loss to the Bengals, 38 to 21, as we're four and four now. Let's see where tandem breakout here. I was ready heading. Don't lose sleep over it. Obviously, he did not succeed in his endeavor to beat the Bengals and have his tandem breakout. As we fall to four and four, we're still second in the division. 11 and six, second in the division. Looks like the Giants and the Commanders made it too. Of course, the Commanders made it. They're at the top of the division as we actually beat them in week 18. For the stats and awards, Dak had a great year. Fourth best offense in the NFL defensively, 23rd. Okay, sure. 4,400 yards, 35 touchdowns, eight interceptions, 113 pass rating for Dak. Trey Benson, Finally, a really good breakout season for him. 21 touchdowns, 4.2 per carry, almost 1,200 yards. CeeDee Lamb, 111 receptions, 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns. James Price, the rookie, 8 touchdowns, almost 1,000 yards. Luke Schoonmaker, 800 yards, 5 touchdowns. Tommy McKee, 5 touchdowns, 800 yards. Defensively, JOK with 128 tackles, tackles for a loss, 19 for Odigazua, sacks, 19 for Micah Parsons, 5 for Dexter Lawrence. He's finally regressed to where I can't even re-sign him anymore and it would be worth it. Interceptions, 4 for Trayvon Diggs, safeties on the team, 1 for Demarcus Lawrence. Defensive touchdowns is, can we beat the 9-8 and New Orleans Saints to move on to the divisional round in year number 3? We do. 31-27 here to face the 8-9 Los Angeles Rams. 
really weird records here. And we do. 31 to 21 here to face the 10 and 7 division arrivals. This time we get home field advantage. Let's see if we can move on back to the Super Bowl. Here we are against the New York Giants. We're going to start out with a huge run with Trey Benson. 7 7 game here. 10 7 game. 14 10 as they take their first lead of the game. And we're going to almost take it right back, but not quite. 13 to 14. They're going to put on another 7 on the board. Come on, put 8 on the board. 21 to 21 against the New York Giants. They're driving down the field here. 28-21. Just don't punt the ball. Red zone alerts. Game is on the line here. Did they not do anything? Get better field position with the punt? Did they... Oh, when they said game is on the line, I thought they were meant they were just in field goal range. They were in... Like, I didn't think they were actually, like, on fourth down. 53 seconds. No timeouts. I'm gonna have to come clutch. Dude, they have three X-Factors on their line. Dexter Lawrence, Brian Burns, and Vince Booker. First and 10, they got some heavy hitters here. Schoonmaker is going to be open on that. Schoonmaker, nice grab. Hurry up, get down, get down. I'm going to have to run this exact same play over and over again because I don't have time to not do that. Please, Vince, back up. Vince is going to go into coverage, which will give me time to back up. I know Schoonmaker was wide open. Holy crap, that block down the field by CD Lamb was amazing. Dude was holding that block for years. That was an amazing job. 24 seconds left for the Giants. Will they be able to do it? They're going to punt overtime. Oh, I wanted to go for two. I forgot about that. Overtime, I'm on the six. Let's make it happen. First and 10 for Trey Benson here. Wow, nice blocking, Trey. Nice blocking, Trey Smith, dude. You did a really good job. I can't wait not to pay you. Third down and four. I'm honestly just looking for the first down. A is going to be open here. Wow, way to cover two routes at once, linebacker. Uh, I'm still going to go for it because I want to win the game. I'm not accepting defeat at the hands of the AI. So, you know, I'm just going to cheese the system with Dak. Go Dak, out of bounds, first and 10. First and 10. We got play action here. We also have B that's going to be wide open. Nice throw, Dak. Real MVP like. Second and 10. We're going back to the play action after the missed throw. A is going to be wide open. Good throw, Dak. Move up field. Schoonmaker, get out of bounds. First and 10. Just trying to get in field goal range here. First and 10. They're pressed up on CeeDee Lamb. That's a bomb. That's going to be a touchdown. CeeDee Lamb is going to end the game regardless if he doesn't score here. We're in field goal range, and that will be the game. For some reason, it's not suggesting I kick the field goal, so did we get first possession? Either way, it doesn't matter. The game's going to be over. Tommy McKee ends the game against the New York Giants, and that should be it. It is it. I don't know why the AI just didn't suggest for me to take the field goal. But either way, we're going back to the Super Bowl as Desmond Ritter is a baller in simulation as he somehow made it to the conference championship with the Giants. Here we are against the 10 and 7 Buffalo Bills to prevent them from getting their first ever Super Bowl and making them 0 and 5 in the Super Bowl. But first, for the team upgrade, surprise, honestly, like, I'm surprised, but I'm going to give Trey Benson superstar dev. If you want to complain, I don't care. The dude got 21 touchdowns in a season. He had a great season for us, an amazing one. 4.2 average, could have been better, but it's definitely not bad. Price has superstar dev. That was a baller pick defensively what do we have jok goes up to an x factor when did he even get superstar oh last season he did johnston has star dev um donovan wilson here has superstar dev i don't know why i blanked out there but for now 91 overall team we need to win the super bowl this year or we probably won't win it at all here we are against the bills as they're gonna start out three seven here six seven defense holding strong score a touchdown offense let's put some points on the board 13 to 10, 16 to 10 at halftime. We open up with a field goal. Offense, you got to put touchdowns on the board. Trey Benson just did it for us. 20 to 23 against the Bills. 30 to 20, 27 to 30 against the Bills. Big field, dude, good, good. Yes, sir. Now we have a chance here to run down this clock, finish this game with a touchdown. Can CD Lamb get off the press? He does not. I'll take Y underneath here. That's going to be Price. Price move up the field out of bounds. First and 10, 1 minute, 27 seconds left. First and 10, give it a Trey Benson here. Oh, nice pancake block up the field by 73, Tyler Smith. Second and four. Second down and four. Let's see what we got here. Waiting Why maybe. Is that going to be there? Yeah, Price up the field again on that drag route. First and 10 out of bounds once again. Second down and four. Who are we going to have? Benson's going to be wide open underneath. Take that, Benson. First and 10. Going to keep draining this clock the best I can. Second and five. Let's get Benson the ball. Power forward. Benson powering forward. Third down into, want to drain the clock a little bit more. We got about 10 seconds left. I still have a timeout left if I need to use it. Trey Benson, can you do it? He can. Walks right in for the touchdown. Nine seconds left. 
for the Bills to go down the field and get a touchdown. It's a four-point game here. I'm not going to hop into this. Please let me out of this. Just skip to the end of the game, and we should win the Super Bowl. And we do, as the Bills are 0-5 in the Super Bowl, as the Cowboys finally claim their first ever Super Bowl win since, what, 1995, 1996, something around there. And this will be a successful rebuild. Trey Benson wins the Super Bowl MVP. Patrick Mahomes wins the league MVP. There are no other awards here for the Cowboys. And honestly, if we weren't going to win that year, we probably weren't going to win at all because I didn't have the cap room to re-sign these upcoming players. In the NFC East, Demarcus Lawrence retires with a ring. Surprise, Zach Martin doesn't go with him since he's like, what, 35 now? Something like that. For free agency, Deron Bland still doesn't want to be here because the scheme fit. We literally just won because the scheme fit. So I'm going to give him the player-friendly deal, spread out his contract so that way it's a really bad deal. And for some reason, it's still considered too much money, even though I would be in the positives if I did that contract. He doesn't want to sign. I think I want to tag and trade him. Tyler Smith, we're just going to lose all these guys. I have $13 million here. Patrick Paul, sure, I'll just accept the option. I'm going to lose Tyler Smith. There's no way it's going to be cheaper than 13 Yeah, he's going to be way over $13 million. Malik Hooker, I'll do I'll do this two-year deal with him. He resigns back for another season. Schoonmaker, Donovan Wilson, how long does... Okay, that's going to be just enough for me. He resigns. I get my safeties back even though they're aging. I'm going to lose Schoonmaker, Deuce Vaughn, DeMar- uh, DeMarvin, Over- DeMarvin Overshone, my bad. Tyler Smith, and I'm going to tag, yeah, I'm going to tag my DB here. That would be Deron Bland. Tag and trade for him. Let's move into the draft. So the Steelers are willing to give me Joey Porter a second and a six. So with that second and a six, I can still build around the team because I did just lose Demarcus Lawrence and Tyler Smith. So I still need to build with that second round pick. And Joey Porter, I don't have to pay nearly as much as Deron Bland. So I'm just going to take this offer. And uh, due to the salary cap restrictions, this offer cannot be accepted. All right, then why would you even offer it to me? Never mind, Steelers. And apparently, I have negative 26 million in cap. And look at this. Let's do some quick maths here. I take Deron Bland. He has 28 million in cap. If I trade him away, oh, I have negative 12 million in cap. That's not math, EA. That doesn't that doesn't make any sense. It's like, oh well, they're accounting for your draft picks, and nah, 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 nah. that's stupid. I don't care. Deron Bland. He has 28 million in cap. I was negative 26 million. I should have positive cap. Once I trade him, tag and trade should make logical sense, but I guess I'm forced to keep him for the final season regardless. In the first round, I'm picking up the offensive end, Jay Paul, who's going to replace Demarcus Lawrence, 6'4", 300 pounds out of Texas Tech, 90 strength, 82 acceleration, hit and dev, A's and B's across the board. He will be Demarcus Lawrence's replacement. In the second round, picking up Tyler Smith's replacement, Vernon Graham out of Florida, 6'2", 306, 86 strength, not very athletic, but he does have hit and dev with two A's on the board. And in the third round, picking up Schoonmaker's replacement, Andrew Palmer out of Texas, 6'6", 250 pounds, hit and dev, very athletic with 91 agility for being 2 250 pounds is kind of crazy. A awareness, A spec catch, B run block, and B run block finesse. Now, this is the team moving into year number four. It did go down and overall a little bit, but Graham is already a 76. Palmer is a 74, and offense still looks amazing. Defensively, Paul is a 72 overall. Parsons moves to left end for Paul, and defense still looks great. Deron Bland, I've tagged him twice. He's probably getting paid a bag right now because I can't even afford to trade him, which I don't know how that makes sense. But I'm going to move Paul here to rush right end. And then apart from that, I'm going to move Price to specialist. And we will move into the fourth and final year. Paul is a 65 overall rush right end, but that's fine. Teen in three, top of the division in the fourth and final year, coming off a 42 to 28 win against the Washington Commanders. Dak, that's got to be league MVP. Show it to me. Dak wins league MVP. Highly doubt he'll ever do that in real life. He got close to it this year. Not quite though. Fourth best offense in the NFL, 12th best defense. Dak, 4,500 yards, 36 touchdowns, 7 receptions, and 114 pass rating is an amazing year, of course. Trey Benson, 15 touchdowns, 3.6 per carry. Down year from last year. Definitely a down year whenever he had 21 touchdowns and 4.2 per carry. Still 15 touchdowns is nice. CeeDee Lamb, 108 receptions, 1,400 yards, 9 touchdowns. James Price, 12 touchdowns, 1,200 yards. Tommy McKee, 800 yards, 5 touchdowns. And the rookie, Palmer, 7 touchdowns, 600 yards, 74 receptions is nice as well. Defensively, JOK, 120 tackles. Tackles for a loss, 18 for Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons breaks the all-time season sack record. 28 and a half is crazy. Odigazua with 7 and a half. Paul with only 2.5, that blows. Interceptions, 4 for Trayvon Diggs. 
Safeties on the team is zero defensive touchdowns is one for Donovan Wilson. We're going to be playing the nine and eight Chicago Bears in the divisional round because of course we had a first round bye. Let's see if we can go back to back conference championships here. Unlike how Dak does in real life, we do 31 to 10 as we're here to face the Bears division rival. So the 11 and six Green Bay Packers. I've already won the Super Bowl. I've already won two conference championships. Can we win a third? We do not. 35 to 32 is going to be your final score. And that will be the video. I thank you guys all for watching. It definitely was a successful rebuild as I rebuilt the Cowboys because they did absolutely nothing in free agency. But if you are new to the channel, remember to like and or subscribe, especially if you made it this far in the video. And I thank you all once again for watching. And I'll see you guys all in the next one.